Well, good evening, church. Welcome to Refresh this Wednesday night. <laughs> glad to have you. Those who are watching online, glad to have you here. Uh, I don't know if uh, a couple of weeks ago we had uh, Scott bring the word and uh, really have some good, uh, um, just a diving deeper into Corinthians. It was a great time. I really enjoyed it with him, and I hope you guys did too. We're going to start off real quick in a word of prayer, and then we're going to go into worship and start praising God this morning, or this evening, sorry. And uh, so if you join me in prayer, Lord God, we're just so grateful that we can be here today. Lord Father, for this midweek, Lord Father, we know that um, you work every day, Lord God, uh, behind the scenes. And we just pray, Lord Father, as we lean into you um, this Wednesday, Lord, that you would uh, give us strength, God, uh, just to learn and to understand and uh, to praise you, Lord Father, uh, the way that only you deserve to be praised. And so we just pray that everything that we do tonight would be according to your word and your will. And it's all in your son's name that we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you join me. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Oh 
God be praised. Oh, God be praised. Praise you, Father. We praise you, Son. I praise the Spirit now in us every moment and all our days. Oh, God be praised. 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 Amen. I love this next song. It's called Reckless Love. It's amazing how God, what we, me and my buddy were just talking about yesterday, how God pursues us, how he's relentless in his pursuit. And this, it shows it in the bridge of this song where it says, there's no shadow you won't light up, no mountain you won't climb up coming after me. That's me and you guys. There's no wall you won't kick down, no lie you won't tear down coming after me. So let's remember that just thinking about the pursuit of God to his people, how gracious he is and how much love he has for us. spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath Fights till 
There's no shadow you won't light up, mounts you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. See that again. There's no shadow you won't light up, mounts you won't climb up.
God rings, let the earth be glad. <clears throat> this next song here is The Goodness of God, and I believe this is the last song for tonight. <clears throat> God is good, amen. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days have been held in your hands. From the moment I wake up until I lay my head, I will see of the goodness of God In all my life you have been faithful In all my life you have been so, so good, yeah With every breath that I am able That I will see of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest nights You were close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend I have lived in the goodness of God. In all my life, you have been faithful. In all my life, you have been so, so good, yeah. With every breath that I am. Of the goodness of God, your goodness, your goodness is running after, it's running after me, yes it is, yeah, your goodness is running after, it's running after me, with my life laid down, surrendered now, I give you everything, your goodness. Running after me, see that your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Yeah, your goodness is running after, it's running. So, so good With every breath that I am able I will see of the goodness of God Cause all my life, yeah Cause all my life you have been faithful Cause all my life you have been so Guys, tonight I'm acting solo here, and I have a, a quick devotion to bring you, but not as quick as I want to rush through it, but uh, it's, a, it's a short devotion. 
but it's really cool. And this, uh, I bring these uh, when, when I'm with, you know, by myself, I bring these because these are the ones that I've read in the past, these devotions that I go through. They were meant for worship leaders and uh, different type, but also worshipers. So I think it really, uh, it's, it's important for all of us to really gain a sense because we're all worshipers. So we've been called to worship God. Um, we are there. You guys come uh, on Sundays and Man, it's just awesome, just the, almost just like one voice just going up to heaven, just just lifting God up, listen, lifting his son up, and, and it's, this is um, kind of just a, an idea or uh, just a thought just to maybe take you a little bit deeper into, into worship, and because, you know, anybody can sing songs or words on a page, but that's not worship. The worship is the connection that we have between our Savior, our Creator, and even the Holy Spirit that's within us that God has put in, inside of us. So if you would, uh, just think about this, and remember this this is for you as well as me too. So um, the title of this is called The Words Remain. And this is, uh, let's see, it's written by Sherry Walters in Santa Clara, uh, uh, Clarita, California. And uh, it comes from uh, this verse in Isaiah 40, uh, chapter 40, verse 7. It says, the grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. Now listen to this next question, and this will get you, re- this will get you reeling a little bit. What would Jesus sing? If Jesus, Jesus is alive and well, but if he was amongst us physically here today, what kind of worship would, would he present to his father? Have you ever asked that question? The answer is tucked right in the geographical and emotional heart of the Bible. It's a hymnal. It's a primer on prayer. It's a collection of songs, public and private, for the community worship, for personal devotion and confession, for weddings, festivals, religious instruction, and lots more. The earthly community where Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us was steeped in its music and poetry. Yes, Jesus' songbook and prayer book was can you guess which one it is? Psalms. What tunes, Jesus, what tunes Jesus sang is a whole different discussion. No musical notation system survives to clue us in on the original melodies of songs, of Psalms, the book of Psalms. We do have a vocabulary. Psalm 7 is titled uh, uh, Shigeon of David. So I don't because I don't speak that language, but Psalms 46 carries the instruction according to Alamoth. Other Psalms are notated with Hebrew words like maskil or uh, uh, miktam, and we're all familiar with selah. But the bad news is scholars can only guess that these are musical or uh, uh, instructions, but lack enough information to give us an accurate definition or details of the actual music. The words remain, the music is lost to us. Music is not the thing that lasts. As worship leaders, worshipers, musicians, that should give us a pause. We put a lot of effort into melodies and harmonies and we do, you know, when we do worship, a lot of uh, instrumentation and arrangements, and man, it gets tiring as well. We should do this, though. But many of us struggle in various congregational contexts to balance cutting-edge musical styles with comfortable, familiar heart songs. This is a valid and sensitive pursuit, but we have to remind ourselves that chord progressions, that's when you play the kind of stuff. Sorry, I'm not mic'd up. But um, <clears throat> chord press, uh, progressions, beats, and melodies don't last. Only the word is eternal. And yet, and yet, setting the word of God to music is one of our highest callings. 
The power of the scripture linked to the power of music alters lives forever. Humankind has known for a millennia that music touches emotions. It engages the brain. It stimulates the body. Now, the brain imaging tools trace and measure and, and quantify uh, the, those responses. Uh, Valerie Selimpour was almost instantaneously brought out of a deep depression by the power of a musical composition. Today, a, a neuroscientist uh, scientist at McGill University in Montreal. She is committed to the study of music's effects. Uh, Salimpour says that the music activates the part of the brain which is involved with the processing of emotion as well as other areas of the prefrontal cortex involved in abstract decision making. So when we're listening to music, the most advanced areas of the brain tie into the most ancient. If that's true of music alone, how much more so when the timeless, eternal word of God is set and sung to music? God, the infinite creator who is uh, infinitely creative, has, cr has gifted us musically to create and present songs and worship him and about him. I believe that he tasks each generation with telling his story in uh, ways that will be heard by their culture. And his story is literally spelled out in the word of God. Like Jesus, we must saturate our minds and hearts with scripture, commit it to memory, tuck it away in our deepest selves, and allow the root of faith that bears fruit in our lives to flourish. Let's propose as worshipers, musicians, singers, songwriters, to read and meditate on and know the word of God and the words will last forever. Here, uh, going deeper in this, uh, they have a going deeper part here. Share, uh, let's see, this is for you guys at home, okay? Share a song and you can share that with your friends, your family, or you can even send me an email or a text. Share a song based on scripture that is especially meaning, uh, meaningful to you or has helped you in some way personally. Let me say that again. Share a song based on scripture that is especially meaning to you, meaningful to you, sorry, I can't talk, to you or has helped you in some way personally. Number two, share some of your favorite scriptures that you think should be set to music. Whew. I'll give you a little uh, little gem here. One of the uh, when I was uh, in a training once at a worship conference, one of the guys said uh, it was actually Paul Beloche. He said, as a, a worship leader, he said you should lock yourself in a room. He says you should um, sing the Psalms. That's the book of Psalms. Sing the so Psalms, and what well, sing? And Oh, yeah, and uh, pray the songs. So as in singing the psalms, the, 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 so if I were to go into psalms and I start putting psalms to music and I'd sing that to God, and then maybe the, song, the songs that I'm working on for that weekend, I would pray those words to God instead of singing them. It's a little mind shift there, so, but that's something that he, he had taught me, and it, it's weird, and it's awkward, but you know what? God, put, God asks us to come out of our comfort zone and do things that maybe we, we don't feel comfortable with. Reason why? Because he gets the glory for it. It's not in our strength. It's, it's in his strength. So, sorry for that little segue there, but it's kind of cool. I just want to give you that. Number three, have you ever... Yeah, you don't have to be a, a worship leader or, or a musician. Have you ever written a song based on scripture or even just made up one to sing privately to God during your devotions? If so, what motivated you to do that? So those are some things going deeper that you can ponder this week. And maybe if you want to say, hey, yeah, Joe, this is, you know, this is something I've tried. Um, maybe this is a song that's really affected you shoot me an email 
or a text and let me know why that's affected you. What song is it? I'll listen to it, I promise. I listen to every song that people send me, and people send me a lot of songs, and sometimes I, I just got to stay up later and listen to them. <laughs> So I appreciate you guys being here with Refresh. Hopefully, this has blessed you this week. And uh, I know uh, whenever I worship God, it's a blessing. Uh, it's also, it gives him the praise and the glory that only he deserves. And then he, my friend, my Savior, my Lord, in turn, gives me peace. Um, I know he loves me. So I know that you guys uh, uh, who are closer to music and, and really love to worship, you probably feel those same and experience those same feelings too. I just want to say we have a great, great, good father. His son, our friend Jesus, um, our savior, is amazing. And I just say may he bless you this week. May he keep you in everything that you do and bring you back on Sunday just fueled and ready to worship. So uh, let me close in prayer and we'll dismiss. Lord Father, we're so grateful that you do. You give us a song. Lord Father, you call us to be your worshipers. And God, it, we just pray, Lord Father, that we wouldn't simply uh, just pass time and, and look at words and sing them, Lord Father, but they would be so much more meaningful because they're about you. Lord God, I just pray that you would spark a fire in us, Lord Father. Help us to um, present to you what you deserve to hear. We love you, and we thank you. We thank you for your son, and we thank you again for the Holy Spirit that you place in us when we say we believe in you. Lord Father, it's all these things that we pray your will be done. It's in your son's name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. And we'll see you guys later.